Hello and welcome to 20 Lore Pro. Today we are at Charlie's Collectible Show in Stone Mountain, Georgia for their Lorcana 2K. We're watching round seven, Charles piloting a Sapphire Steel deck versus George piloting a Amethyst Ruby list. We hope that you enjoy today's tournament. in these ruby amethyst lists trying to just get down that full in that way you can start gaining lore off of it in this case not able to but he does i see a merlin rabbit a lot of times trying to we, we see this merlin rabbit here in hand allowing him to draw whenever he's ready here we see a classic Flavor Sham ability able to get rid of that fortified Fortisphere, allowing him to draw two cards. Charles just having so many options in hand. Really trying to get up as quickly as they can up to seven, eight, nine ink, playing the Lucky Dime into these Tamatoas. If these Ruby Amethyst lists are able to get up so high into their ink well that they can play Be Prepared, just having the ability to have a lucky dime down that way anything these sapphire steel players play uh, will just give them automatic lore we see charles though having to ink a bell here during that last turn bell representing a lot of lore that could be uh, gained later on the match depending on his ink count george here choosing to brawl to get rid of that flavor sham not wanting charles to draw any more a great option as charles is seeking to continue to gain resources in his hand I believe that Sisu sang the brawl. See what these two players are thinking as Charles is taking his turn here with this flavor sham followed up after it got brawled away last turn. Looks like he didn't sing the brawl, but was able to quest there with that Sisu going up to four. Charles now at zero. Glad to see another Flavor Sham on Charles' side of the board, I'm sure, as he's trying to gain more and more resources, drawing tons of cards. Even if George is able to double sing either Be King, Undisputed, or play out uh, Be Prepared with this type of board state, 
Um, really, Charles is going to have the resources and the ability to play just double cards later on in the match. George looks like he's thinking about playing this. No, he decides to ink that Queen's Castle, following it up with a Brawl. Using the Sisu this time to challenge into this Mickey Detective. Really clearing up the board very nicely, leaving Charles with not a lot on his side besides his ink. This Sisu, of course, is huge with the number of cards in Charles's hand. Able to just challenge and take out anyone that's needed on Charles' side of the board. Charles here with another Mickey Mouse detective. Get his ink well pretty high here. Able to use that Captain Hook with the Challenger 2 to get rid of that Sisu. George here using this Merlin Rabbit. I'm sure a great option for any bounce targets that he may have in order to draw cards. Charles here doing a great job getting his ink well pretty high. Looks like George is currently at uh, six, five to six ink in his ink well. Charles here at a good place to try to play down some of these items, try to set up for some great Lucky Dimes or Tamatoa lines. Here we see Ariel. Some of these lists have two of, if not three of, Ariel. So Ariel specifically has Ward, able to quest for three with that 3-4 body. We have more items than your, each of your opponent. This character gets two plus lore, gaining a five lore total in one turn. Great card right here that can't quite be targeted specifically. Let's see if George is able to do a double cleanup though. If Charles next turn is able to gain five off of the aerial from questing, slam down the lucky dime and gain another five off of it, uh, this could be a very strong play. See a brawl in Charles in George's hand. Along with Lady Tremaine, lots of great options here. He quests with the rabbit and does play the be prepared. Great timing, George, most likely thinking that there could be a lucky dime follow up or not wanting Ariel to quest for five. We see, we know that he has the uh, Lady Tremaine as well as a King Undisputed. So George is in a great spot to really clean up any other single characters that Charles may play. And there's a lucky dime followed up by a popsicle. If, if Charles's aerial had, would have survived, that would have been a total of 10 lore in one turn. George refilling his hand, doing great options here with replaying these draw cards, knowing that he doesn't have to do anything quite yet. Charles playing a big tink here, gaining two lore with a lucky time, utilizing it in the same turn. That way he's gain, able to gain some advantage, even if this... Tinkerbell does get King Undisputed. Looks like he counted exactly enough ink in order to do that. And there it is, the King Undisputed. We've seen some lists play uh, no Lady Tremaine's and only King Undisputed, but in this case, we see that George has both. Really a great follow-up play here is that Queen's Castle moving both the Merlin Rabbit and the Maleficent Sorcerer onto the Queen's Castle. A lot of draw power here and resource gain for George on his side of the board presented. We'll see what Charles can do here to try and gain some ink and some lore. Decides to use a Rise of the Titans. Followed up by a Grab Your Swords, making the board states even. Of course, minus the items that Charles has. George here having to play out a Lady Tremaine with no targets does represent a two quest character for three, four. Charles here having lots of items in play, the ability to recast things. I wonder when we're gonna see a Tamatoa come down. 
Tamatua here would be a great option. Able to Lucky Dime, get back an item. Charles here with a Big Tink. Here's George now getting to gain that two lore using the snake and then replaying Lady Tremaine. Able to get rid of that big tink. What a great double play and also a way to increase uh, George's lore at the same time. Now we have a 3-3 snake along with this 3-4 Lady Tremaine. George is up to eight. Here's a large Hades here from Charles' side of the board. This Hades uh, doing a great job, able to put it into the inkwell. Also a great target for a Lucky Dime. Uh, Charles chose not to though. And here we go, we see George playing Madame Medusa. Not sure on the count of that, but it is able and strong enough to remove a Hades, which has a three power. Now we see Charles here gaining off of that Lucky Dime from the Cogsworth, going up to seven. Again, leaving just these one characters on Charles' side of the board. Quick things for Lady Tremaine or just even King Undisputed to be able to take care of on their own. George choosing to use all of his characters to quest in, going up to 12. Has a follow-up play here of King Undisputed, like I was just talking about. Able to remove that Cogsworth. Even though it's got Ward, that King Undisputed just able to take it out. These uh, Lady Tremaine effects are really great when you see your opponent, Sapphire Steel here, just playing one character at a time, able to just get eaten up by cards just like this. Charles on quite a bit of ink now. Looks like he's got nine ink. Able to play a Tamatoa and use a Lucky Dime if he needs to. And there's a Fishbone Quill on his side of the board as well. We'll see if Charles is able to find a way to get back into this match as George is just going so wide at this point. We've seen Charles use Grab Your Swords earlier in the match, able to clean up the board earlier. It's going to need quite a bit in order to take care of George's side of the board. He's already up to 12. Here's one answer in the form of Z Along Came Zeus, dealing five damage to that Medusa. George going up to 15. Now we're starting to get into goat range or the Queen's Castle. Really, George is just presenting so much lore here on the board, really able to do so much. Able to draw two, seeing that friends on the other side, inking a Maui. Lots of options in George's hand was able to play out quite a bit here. Representing four lore on the board during the next turn. Charles is gonna have to find something very quick. We know that Ariel and Bell are options. We'll see what he can do in order to gain so much lore into one turn. He's got two turns possibly, depending if George has a goat or not, to try to make something happen. There's a whole new world trying to find something to do it. George revealing his hand, didn't really see a goat there. This is some dangerous territory to see what happens with George during his next turns. Charles is trying to find a way to get back in right here very quickly. Possibility that we may see a goat bounce here depending on what George drew during his uh, whole new world hand.
Charles with a third giant Tinkerbell this match. And there's the goat. And that is the match, or that is the game. Sorry, game one, George versus Charles. Great job with George taking that match. Here's our second feature match of the day. We watched Michael earlier playing Talman Purple, now at 4-2, playing against Mark, who's piloting a Ruby Amethyst list. We're still here in game one. A lot of characters on Mark's side of the board. We see two Flynn's. Uh, along with a Maui, able to really help uh, Mark gain three Laura turn with those those Flins. Have some lines here for Michael to be able to get out of this situation. We know that Ursula Deceiver singing cards like Mother Knows Best could double bounce some characters, but just. A lot of lore represented on Mark's side of the board here with those two Flynn's. Flynn's just uh, being able to give him six lore a turn. This uh, Flynn frenemy has just really been a great staple in these Ruby Amethyst lists. Uh, playing it with Maui, playing it with Sisu really represents just so much lore and in this game uh, is just really doing a lot. Again, we want to thank everyone for joining us here at 20 Lore Pro as we are streaming Charlie Collectible Show's Lorcana 2K. Really excited to have streamed their 10K yesterday and their finals into today. If you miss any of those rounds, you can head on over to 20 Lore Pro YouTube early this week and we'll have those available for your viewing pleasure. Michael finding himself in a tough spot as he's trying to just see what he can do to try to find some ways to get out. Again, just these Flynn's with six lore, uh, just at the upkeep, really representing so much uh, gain. Really here at 11, really quick into 17. Michael seeing the state of the game, not seeing a way to come out of it, ends up uh, conceding to his opponent for that game one. His opponent's able to take it. Mark gets the win for game one of that match. Here we are back in our feature match for game two. Charles piloting Sapphire Steel versus George piloting Ruby Amethyst. See Charles here with uh, two popsicles, <laughs> uh, pretty standard lead, and having inked a flavor sham, probably indicating that he has another one in hand, something that wants to eat those popsicles. George playing a Chernobyl's followers and turning that into a Madame M Snake. George here up one game. Charles is getting to go first again. a fishbone quill putting Charles up to four ink now in his ink well uh, very quickly getting ahead we didn't get to see the turn three uh, fishbone quill last game so now we're going to see this do uh, probably some work this game for Charles here's a flavor sham able to draw him two cards just like we said if you're inking one you most likely have another and a third popsicle a lot of draw power from Charles' side of the board. Love to see this for Sapphire Steel. Here's George able to take out both using Brawl. Brawl just has such a great uh, ability to remove these flavor shams that just create a lot of uh, troublesome interaction with these blue, the Sapphire Steel players able to draw. But look at Charles's inkwell here. It is getting to a point where he's going to start looking for Lucky Dimes and Tamatoas, just like he tried to find during the last match. George here himself up to four ink, going to five here soon. We see a Queen's Castle in hand. 
And not to be uh, outdone, Ruby Amethyst George able to draw so much with friends on the other side here and that Maleficent Sorceress is able to play this Queen's Castle and have enough resources to move the snake over while it's questing. What a great resource game we have here. We're watching George really playing it out as he's trying to draw the best he can in order to make sure he has answers for whatever Charles is gonna drop down. And here is a huge bell here. I think we're not quite at 10, but we will be next turn if we're not there now. Bell just really able to quest for quite a bit. Uh, we see Charles use a baboon here on the Queen's Castle. And is able to whole new world singing it with Cogsworth. These five drops in the Sapphire Steel list, uh, just really great singers. We know that Charles has a uh, Tinkerbell as we saw three of them during the last match really is just setting himself here to try to get these high cost characters onto the board or items like Lucky Dime. He has the ink now to make those double plays or to make plays like that. So here's to hoping that Charles can try to find a way there. At the same time though, filling up George's hand, he was at four ink, five ink last time we saw. There's that bell up there for you on the board to see that during your turn, you may put an additional card in your hand into your ink well. But the big thing that is going to be very relevant right here is that while you have 10 or more cards in your ink well, this character gains four plus on your lore for questing. A uh, really strong five altogether with a lucky dime, 10 in total. We know that George has quite a bit of ways to get outs here, like King Undisputed and currently at his five ink in his ink well trying to probably get up to a be prepared seeing these cogsworths and flavor shams on the board we see charles really utilizing all that ink to the best of his abilities in that flynn that really isn't doing too much for him right now is able to use a madame medusa as a pseudo brawl to get rid of this flavor sham We saw that George is on the Lady Tremaine Medusa split. Not sure how many on each end, but that Madame Medusa serving him well here. Not able to directly target the Cogsworth, most likely looking to try to get rid of this bell. This Madame Medusa is able to sing uh, Be King Undisputed very well, and uh, possibly hard casting one might get rid of the other character on Charles's board. Charles here, he has dug so deep this game. He's drawn so much with the popsicles. He's drawn with the flavor shams. He's whole new worlded, but uh, we don't see a lucky dime quite yet. Does let go the Madame Medusa, taking away a singing option. Putting George up though, a lot closer to be prepared range, along with a Maui, which we do see there in hand. Great answer to Bell if it decides to quest out. playing a low drop character like this captain hook really helps uh from protection against king undisputed you could always choose to pitch that little pirate instead of one of your huge five drop singers charles decides to poke into that queen's castle putting up to four damage has been getting george some damage this turn and quest with the bell going up to five. George, we did see has that Maui, uh, that snake here representing a lot of damage as well. Finding out how much he has, there's the Maui. Tries to get rid of Cogsworth. Just removing that uh, ability to give resist to other characters. 
and in turn is able to brawl away the bell. George here really doing his best to clean up this board state and is doing a great job without having to find a be prepared. That bell here did get him five lore, but without that lucky diamond play, he wasn't uh, able to see more. I'm sure Charles looking for that lucky dime as best he can. George quests out. Key Mouse able to get another ink in the inkwell. So much on Charles's side. Easily able to double play anything. And here's a big tink. Now those smaller characters on George's side of the board aren't able to quest as easily. Now this Maui will have to challenge into this Captain Hook. Putting it up to four damage total. George here really is doing quite a bit of work. Here are two Queen's Castles in play for George, representing four lore a turn. Really quite a bit. Does a ch challenge in, taking out that Captain Hook, moving two and one to the Queen's Castles, representing a lot of draw here for George. 14 lore on the board. Next turn, he'll go up to 18 if these two Queen's Castles survives. Charles is going to have to find quick ways to gain lore or he may see the match be gone. Charles here, looking at how much he has in his inkwell, really can do so much. the workshop and just another item into play we're gonna have to see some more from Charles here to help him get up he is able to challenge with this Tinkerbell into the Maleficent dealing two extra damage to the snake follow-up play would be the Maui smashing into it still leaves the problem of the Queen's Castles oh but a giant Tinkerbell Able to clean up so much of the board here. Opting to use most likely this, yep, Mickey Mouse and to trade into that Madam Snake. A car we've seen so much today from Charles is this giant Tinkerbell. Uh, he's seen it, uh, several copies of it every match. Uh, has done a lot of damage and in this match in particular is doing a lot of work for him But these Queen Castles after that be prepared That's gonna be game and there's the fist bump from George Congratulations George and Charles both for making this far here in round seven and George specifically for taking the win Congratulations to you both We want to thank everyone for watching here today over on 20 Lord Pro We're, we've been here at Charlie's Collectibles show in Atlanta, Georgia we watched their 10K yesterday, and today we've been watching their 2K um, and just excited to be here. We'll see if we can't get an interview here, but we will be back with the top eight here in just a little bit. Thank you all again.